The objective of this module is to give you an overview of how to monitor video in the Avigilon Control Center client software. The subject of this module is most relevant to security officers who are responsible for watching over live video feeds in a casino or large commercial buildings. We will talk about how to display video, how to control PTZ cameras, how to adjust the way video is displayed, how to respond to alarms, and alternative ways to monitor video. For more information about any of the topics discussed in this module, see the help files included with the software. To access the software help files, just press F1 or click the application menu button in the top right corner, then select help. If you are not able to see or access some of the features described in this module, it may be because you do not have the required user permissions or you are using a different edition of the software. We will identify any features that are edition specific with the following icons. To display video, you simply add a camera to the view. There are a number of ways to do this. From the System Explorer, you can double-click a camera, drag a camera to an image panel, or right-click a camera and select Add to View. You can also display camera video by using the keyboard command. Make sure the camera has a logical ID or the shortcut will not work. To remove a camera from the view, Click the Close button in the top right corner of the image panel or select the image panel and press Backspace. In the System Explorer, you see everything you can access in your system. Sometimes you will see a blue overlay on a System Explorer icon and this is what it might mean. If you see this icon, the camera is installing a firmware upgrade. A Vigilon cameras automatically receive firmware upgrades after the server software has been updated. The icon is removed when the firmware upgrade is complete. If you see this icon, the device is not connected to the server. The device may no longer be on the network or there is a network conflict. If you see this icon, the device has been manually disconnected, but there is still data from the device stored on the server. If the icon appears over a camera, you will not be able to watch live video from the camera because it's been disconnected, but recorded video is still available. You should always check on the device if this icon unexpectedly appears. The device may have been tampered with. When you have video displayed, you can digitally zoom in on the video to see things in greater detail. You can roll your mouse scroll wheel forward to zoom in and roll the scroll wheel backwards to zoom out or use the keyboard shortcuts. You can also select one of the zoom tools in the toolbar. When using the zoom tools, you can drag across the image panel to create a zoom box that defines the area you want to zoom into. Otherwise, you can simply click the image panel until you reach the desired zoom level. Once you've digitally zoomed in on the video, you can pan by right-click and dragging across the image panel or using the arrow keys. If you prefer, you can also select the pan tool in the toolbar to left-click and drag. If you have a PTZ camera in your system, you can control the camera's mechanical pan, tilt, and zoom abilities through the ACC software. Besides controlling the camera with a joystick, you also have the option of using your mouse and keyboard. First, click this button to enable the PTZ controls. You will now see a square in the middle of your PTZ video. If your camera has the click to center ability, click anywhere in the image panel to center the camera on that point. Otherwise, drag your mouse from the square to move the camera in any direction. If your camera has the drag to zoom ability, left click and drag to create a green square around the area you want to zoom into. If not, you can use the scroll wheel on your mouse or the zoom buttons on the PTZ controls pane. To access the PTZ controls pane, click the button on the bottom right corner of the image panel. You will see all the controls that are supported by your camera. Your screen may look different from our example. The top row are the zoom buttons, the next row are the iris buttons, and the third row are the focus buttons. One useful PTZ tool is the preset feature. Presets allow you to tag a specific area, zoom position and focus in the camera's field of view so that you can instantly return the camera to the same position later. To set a preset, move the PTZ camera into position. Then select an empty number from the drop-down list, then click the Set Preset button. In the following dialog box, give the preset a name, then click OK. 
Now that you've created presets, you can create guard tours. Tours allow you to set a Vigilon HDPTZ cameras to automatically move between a series of preset positions, like a security guard walking through a site. You can set the camera to pause at each preset and set the speed that the PTZ camera moves between presets. To create a tour, select an empty number in the Tours drop-down list and click the Edit button. In the following dialog box, give the tour a name and set your preferences. You can add as many presets as you want to the tour. Click OK to save the new tour. Now that you have a sense of how video is displayed in the ACC software, we're going to explain the difference between a view and an image panel. A view is the container tab where you are able to watch video, but an image panel is where video is displayed. By having image panels in a view, you can customize how video is displayed and open multiple views to meet your needs. To open a new view tab, open the new task menu and click video. To close a view tab, just click the close button for that tab. You also have the option of opening a new window from the application menu. This allows you to make use of your multi-monitor workstation. If you have multiple views open and wish to cycle through each view for a couple of seconds at a time, click this button to start. You can set how long each view tab is displayed for in the client settings window. By default, each new view tab has four image panels. You can change the number of image panels by selecting a different view layout. To select a different layout, select this button, then choose the layout you want. If none of the default layouts fit your viewing needs, you can create your own layout by clicking Edit Layouts. In the following dialog box, select the layout closest to what you want, then add or remove lines to create the layout that you prefer. In this example, we want to create two vertical image panels on the top left and have a larger single image panel on the bottom right. Click OK to save and use your new layout. Now that you have the layout you prefer, you can also move the cameras between the image panels to fit the new layout better. To move a camera video, just click and drag the video from one image panel to another. If you want to make full use of your monitor, you can display the view in full screen mode. Just click this button. Be aware that the System Explorer is not available in full screen mode. To exit full screen mode, press Escape or click this button again. Now that you've set up the View tab to look how you want, you can click Save View. This will save the configured view to the System Explorer so that you can reuse it at any time you want. In the following dialog box, select the site you want the view saved to, then give it a name and logical ID. The logical ID is needed to use the keyboard commands. Once saved, everyone with access to your site can use the saved view. To open a saved view, just double-click the view from the System Explorer or use the keyboard command. If you have public display monitors or a video wall in your surveillance system, then you probably have the Avigilon Virtual Matrix software installed. The Virtual Matrix software allows you to control what is displayed on the remote monitors that are connected to your surveillance system. The Virtual Matrix monitors are listed in the System Explorer with this icon. Double-click one to open the monitor as a view. Once open, you can control it like any view while the remote monitor instantly displays your changes. When you've made your changes, just close the View tab to save your changes. The remote monitor continues to display the view you've made. Now that you know how to use views, we will tell you how to use image panels. When you move your mouse inside an image panel, a set of buttons is automatically displayed. These buttons allow you to control the image panel and give you direct access to the camera that is displayed. Not all buttons will be visible to you because what is displayed in an image panel depends on the devices that are linked to the camera. To start, this button maximizes the image panel. You can also double-click the image panel to perform the same action. Click the button or double-click the image panel again to restore it back to size. Click this button to take a snapshot of what is displayed in the image panel. When you click the button, you are immediately taken to the Export tab. From there, you can select the snapshot image format and where you want to save the image. 
Click this button to trigger any digital output that may be connected to the camera, like a door release. You may see this circle in the top left, glowing either blue or red. This is the recording indicator. If it is blue, there may have been a motion or triggered event, or the camera has been set to record all the time. If it is red, the camera started recording because of an event, or motion has been detected in the camera's field of view. When it is gray, the camera is not recording. If an event is occurring and you would like to make sure the whole event is recorded, you can click the circle to set the camera to manually record the event. The camera will automatically stop recording after a preset amount of time, but you can click the button again to stop it manually. If you do not see the circle, you may need to enable the record indicator overlay. You can do this from the client settings dialog box. As you watch live video, you can choose to instantly replay an event that was just recorded. Just right-click the image panel and select one of the instant replay options. Replay the last 30 seconds, 60 seconds, or 90 seconds. The video automatically stops after the selected amount of time and remains in recorded mode. If there is a microphone connected to the camera, you may see this button. When you click this button, you unmute the audio that is streaming through the connected microphone. You can adjust the volume by moving the bar up and down. Click the button again to mute the audio. You can only listen to this audio when the connected camera video is displayed. If there is a speaker connected to the camera, you will see this button. When you click and hold this button, you will be able to speak to the person on the other side of the camera. Make sure you have a microphone connected to your workstation or this feature will not work. If there is a point of sale device connected to the camera, you will see this button. Click this button to see the live POS transactions feed in a separate image panel. And from the POS image panel, you can click this button to go back to the live video stream. If there are more than one camera or transaction source connected together, you will be prompted to choose one to display at a time. Click this button to arm the image panel. When you arm an image panel, you are reserving the image panel specifically for displaying video linked to alarms or rules. Armed image panels allow you to review and acknowledge alarms while monitoring video in a view. Any image panel can be armed or disarmed as required. Armed image panels are identified with a red border. If there are no armed image panels, alarm video will appear in the next empty image panel in the current view or in a new view if all current image panels are in use. This feature is most useful when you have severe alarms with linked video that require your immediate attention. Otherwise, you can also review alarms in the Alarms tab. Besides video, you can also display maps in an image panel. Just double-click the map in the System Explorer or drag it into an image panel like a camera. Maps can be created out of any image of your surveillance site. You can place cameras, encoders, saved views, and web pages onto the map. When a map is displayed, you can click any of the elements on the map to open it in the next image panel. For example, when you click this camera, the camera's live video stream is displayed. If a camera flashes red, that means that an alarm that is linked to the camera has been triggered. If your surveillance system uses online content, you can save the pages to the System Explorer and display the web pages in an image panel. To open the web page, just double-click the web page in the System Explorer. By default, when you first display video, it is always the live video stream. But if you need to look back on something that was recorded, just click the Recorded button. If you only want to see one specific video in recorded mode, Right-click the image panel and select Recorded. Video in recorded mode is always displayed with a green border. When you want to switch back to live mode, just click the Live button or right-click the image panel and select Live. When in recorded mode, the timeline is displayed. The timeline lets you see when video was recorded and lets you control the video that is displayed. In the timeline, you see a list of all the cameras in the view. The bars in the timeline tell you when the camera recorded video. If the bar is red, the camera recorded a motion event. If the bar is blue, it recorded video. A digital input event, alarm or POS source could have triggered the camera to record. 
If the bar is a solid blue all the way across the timeline, the camera is set to record continuously. Whenever there is a white empty space, no video is recorded. If you see an orange bar, it is a bookmark of a recorded event. To start playing back recorded video, just pick a point in the timeline, then press play. To select a starting point, just click the timeline and the red timeline marker moves to that location. Or, you can select a specific day and time in the gray date and time display. To help you find how far back recorded video may go, you can zoom in and out on the timeline. Just use the scroll wheel on your mouse or use the zoom bar at the bottom left corner of the window. When you zoom in on the timeline, you can zoom in to the millisecond and zoom out to see the oldest video recording on the server. To play back video, just click play. All the recorded video for the cameras in the view start playing. While video is playing, click the fast forward or fast backward buttons to increase the playback speed. To stop, click pause. While the video is stopped, click the step forward and step backward buttons to move the video one frame at a time. To move from event to event in the camera's recording history, click one of the jump buttons. Another way to move through the timeline is to drag the timeline marker forward and backward across the timeline. As you drag through the timeline, the video stream follows the timeline marker position. When you find a recorded event, you can choose to bookmark it. Make sure the timeline marker is at the start of the event, then right-click the timeline and select Add Bookmark. In the following dialog box, enter the details of the event. Be sure to include an incident number, name of the complainant, and other details that may help you identify the bookmark later. You can also add other cameras that may be relevant to the event. If you select the Protect Bookmark Data checkbox, the bookmark will never be deleted. This is helpful if you do not know how long the investigation will go on, but it may be a better option to export the video instead. After you click OK, the bookmark is added to the timeline. If your system uses alarms, you can also monitor alarms through the Alarms tab. In the New Task menu, click Alarms. In the Alarms tab is a list of active alarms. You can select an alarm and review each alarm trigger and linked video. You can assign the alarm to yourself to show others that you are working on the issue. And you can acknowledge the alarm to show that the issue has been resolved. To help you look at the alarm in more detail, you can open the related alarm video in a new view. Now that you know how to monitor video, we will talk about how to adjust the video display on your computer. In the Client Settings window, select the Display tab. From here, you can choose the overlays you see over the image panel and set the display quality setting for your computer. The overlay options are displayed immediately over the image panel. If you have a large number of cameras in your system, it may be helpful to display the customized camera name and location to help you identify where the camera is. And like we talked about earlier, the record indicator must be turned on for you to use the manual recording controls. The motion activity overlay highlights any movement in the scene in red. The timestamp overlay is only displayed when you are watching video in recorded mode. If your computer does not have enough network bandwidth or processing power, you may not be able to watch video at its full image rate and full quality. You can bias the image panels to display video in high quality and low frame rate, or lower quality and high frame rate. Select a higher setting if you need to see specific details or faces in the scene. Select a lower setting if it is more important to see moving events as they occur. The Change Display Quality settings only affect the image panel display and does not affect the actual video quality or image rate between the camera and the server. So, you can review recorded footage later to confirm what you saw in the image panel. The default setting is high to provide the best system performance and image quality for your needs. If you have trouble seeing video details on your monitor,